What's going on boys and girls, what's up world, Austin John plays here, and today I want to talk about the Wall Street Journal's brand new report on the brand new Nintendo Switch. By the way guys, be sure to stick around to the end of the video for the Nintendo Switch giveaway. <laughs> So last week, the Wall Street Journal put out an article that you have to purchase the Wall Street Journal for to read the entire article, saying Nintendo plans new version of the Switch for next year. Updated console isn't expected to adopt the OLED panels used inside of iPhone X series. Now we know Nintendo's been working on a brand new revision of the Nintendo Switch ever since they discovered that with the Tegra chip, you could just hack the Switch by putting in a paper clip to the right side of the Joy-Con. Ever since then, we knew they'd be working on something because they don't like cheaters. Makes sense. According to the Wall Street Journal's report for the brand new Nintendo Switch, they're going to be focusing on the screen. Last Saturday, I had a Spawn cast with Spawn Wave and some other great guys on there, and we talked about a lot of the outcomes and possibilities that we may see. And ever since this article posted, people are going crazy. People are saying it's going to be brand new. We're going to get the Switch Mini. We're going to get the Switch XL. We're going to be able to do 4K 60 FPS. None of those things are true. I'm sorry, I'm here to bring it back down to earth. My favorite part is when websites like dailystar.co.uk come up with fun little images like this. I might even use that as the thumbnail for clickbait. The Nintendo Switch revision is most likely not going to get a brand new size or non-removable Joy-Cons or things like that. Let's talk about Nintendo's priorities for the brand new Switch. One, make it so you can't hack it. They're tired of people using a paperclip to hack their brand new Nintendo Switch and no firmware update is gonna be able to stop that. It makes a lot of sense. They're gonna be replacing the chip inside of there. They may opt for one that's slightly more powerful. A general rule of technology, as years go by, more power becomes cheaper. So I think, which brings me to point number two, what we're going to be seeing for the Nintendo Switch is that you're going to be getting a handheld and the screen is gonna be able to play at a better gaming resolution and frame rate as when it's in dock mode. Everyone knows that when it's in dock mode, it's gonna be able to draw more power because it constantly has power coming in and it kind of overclocks the chips inside of there, uses them to their full performance, and then you get better gameplay. If we are going to be getting a better screen, which is probably gonna have better color, we're not getting HDR, we're not getting a 4K in handheld, we're not getting any of those things. They would really push for like, Mario Odyssey to be 1080 in handheld. That's it. That's it. They just want games that are currently stuck at 900p or 720p to be upscaled to 1080. We may not see that dramatic of an improvement. Do keep in mind, this is Nintendo we're talking about here. Do you know the resolution on the 3DS? And the 3DS XL? Well, it's the same resolution for both. I think it's like 240 by 200. It's something ridiculously horrible. And Nintendo have been coming up with fun ways to work around that really horrible resolution for a very long time, using outlines of models and things like that. They're no stranger to putting fun over quality of performance. Every single person knows that. Point number three is that Nintendo wants to bring the price down. They've always wanted to bring the price down. In fact, every console manufacturer out there always wants to bring the price down to make it more accessible. Let's face it, once Pokemon leaves the 3DS and goes to the Nintendo Switch, no one's going to be buying the 3DSs. People might buy the brand new limited edition 2DS XLs because they're cool. Adults might buy it for their kids for Christmas or something like that as like a first console because you could pick up the 2DS and Mario Kart 7 for I think it's like 80 bucks at GameStop or 70 bucks and it's always in stock. That would make a lot of sense for them to keep that coming in. There are two large expenses that Nintendo has for the Nintendo Switch. One being the Joy-Cons and two being the dock. The dock alone is 80 bucks, which it shouldn't be because it's literally like a small little piece of motherboard with a ribbon cable and there's some chips in there that tell it what to do in a USB hub and that's pretty much it. And then also the Joy-Cons, which Fun fact, if you go to Nintendo Switch website, this is a really crazy thing. On the Nintendo website, there's create your favorite color combo of Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. I didn't plan that, that just worked out. So like, you could choose whichever colors that you want for your Nintendo Switch. And then which straps you could choose, which that just seems unnecessary. 
So like say for example I wanted red joy cons with blue straps It says that I need to go buy two neon straps and one neon red joy con bundle or say for example I wanted the splatoon colors and black things that's included with that or if I wanted to go crazy with extra straps boom so they literally have a service on their website for which Joy-Cons you want, which colors you want. I think it's very possible because Nintendo already has the groundwork in place for having Joy-Cons of various colors and types available that they may remove the Joy-Cons from the Nintendo Switch bundle before anything else. Or just work on getting a $300 bundle with the game included. They may do that with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe because it's already sold its fair share, or um, Mario Odyssey, because that's already done its numbers. I doubt we'll see Breath of the Wild, because that was uh, a dual system release. These limited edition Switch bundles are pretty cool, except this is by far the laziest Joy-Con idea ever. Mario Tennis Ace is a great example, $360. Oh, it also includes 1-2 Switch. Great, every Switch should include 1-2 Switch. It's a horrible game. But if they could take a bundle like this and get it down to this price point right here of $299.99 then it's gonna be a little bit more justified for some people but at the same time people just look at the price tag that's it that's the reason you don't see it selling for $300 it's $299.99 it's penny shy of 300 USD so just vibe with me here a second if you take the Nintendo switch and you remove the joy cons from the bundle you could then have it selling for 240, 250 USD. There's another idea that some people were mentioning of if you remove the dock from the bundle. And if you remove the dock, it's going to appeal to the handheld audience, not the docked audience. And the advantage of that over not having the Joy Cons is that everything you need is inside of the box. And then doing that, they could also take off 50, 60 bucks. I doubt we'll see both of them removed. And you just buy the Switch and then dock separately and Joy-Con separately. It's just weird because the dock is currently out and they have issues with third-party docks. So we may not see that coming off. It might be more of a Japan thing because they're all about the handheld market over there. Things like right here where you see the Nintendo Switch with non-removable Joy-Cons in a smaller size. I don't think we're going to be seeing that. Nintendo may be doing something like this, it's not going to be soon. In fact, the update that we're probably going to be getting isn't going to be mentioned at all. Summarizing it all up, with security as the number one concern, we're probably going to be seeing a very quiet update. It's just going to be new hardware inside of there. I doubt they're going to call it the new Switch. We're probably not going to be seeing something as far as the Switch S or the Switch Mini. It's just going to be a quiet revision. It's going to make sure it gets the important stuff done, and that's it. We may see new bundles. As much as I wish the Switch was coming out with these cool, smaller, non-Joy-Con detachable versions, which I would buy all of them because they are dope. Except for maybe this part, this green one. Not crazy about that. But the yellow one is dope. And the red one. Even the violet and the black one. How small are, would those Joy-Cons be? So like, the screw, so like it ends there. Oh God, that, that's so small. That's what she said. Even for, for my tiny girly hands. So guys, I want to know your opinions down below on what do you think for the brand new Switch revision. Are you on Team Austin where we say it's not going to be anything crazy or Team of crazy internet hype that says it's going to be crazy? Leave a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out. Let's talk about the giveaway. I've mentioned it a few times before. I'm giving away a Nintendo Switch or $300 of eShop credit and a copy of Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee or a copy of Switch Ultimate. All you need to do is like the video, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment down below with either Let's Go as one word or Smash Ultimate as one word. And I want to know your favorite color of fake, of fake Nintendo Switch Mini that we saw in the thumbnail on the website. What's your favorite color? I want, I, which, which is your favorite color of this? Leave that down with the comment. Till next time, Austin John out.